This is one of my favorite people, my favorite people in strength training. And a mom is here, and that's not the only reason I'm saying this. Mickey made the point he had a lot of mentors. Mickey's primary mentor was Al Johnson, who at the time was the head strength and conditioning coach at West Virginia, and Al was one of our speakers uh, during the clinic. Uh, Mickey didn't need any more mentors. Because I was around in Cincinnati uh, giving clinics, giving lectures, uh, coming in and giving my two cents on what was going on at the Bengals or at UC. At one point, UC didn't have any full-time strength coaches, so they go, why don't you drive here, get Grater's ice cream, and like hang out and talk to our strength coach for seven or eight hours each day for like three days. And I go, and? Yeah, that would be great. I was hoping for some sort of an honorarium, but you know, that never happened. And Mickey came in and really was the, not the first full-time guy, but pretty much the first full-time guy that got any support. And we put in a full room for him of equipment in a new training center, and it was great. And I showed up one day and he said, you've got to meet this girl. And I said, you know I'm married. And he goes, no, 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 no. He goes, you've got to meet this girl. I've got an athlete. He goes, I train her like a guy. Now that, that, now that would be demeaning now. Right? Kelly would get mad at me now. But in those days, remember, my wife, one of the reasons my wife and I got together, one of, one of somebody, a mutual friend said, you got to meet this girl. She knows who you are. She lifts weights. Women did lift weights in the 60s. They did not do that. She was an anomaly. And Mickey said to me, I have got a girl. I train her like a guy, and he lit up. He goes, you have got to see this. The girl was a volleyball player, wound up being captain of the team, sort of skinny, cute, and the toughest. Then I said, I could take her home with me, and she could walk the streets with us. This is a tough girl. He killed her, she wanted more, she became his assistant, he went to Notre Dame, she went with him. We had a hammer clinic at a reasonable hotel. If Tom was here, I'd ask him which one it was. They probably threw it. Tom, when we had the infamous Dr. Ken Hammer Strength Midnight Workout, where was it? Okay, on 5 for 71, there was a motel there. At 1 a.m., we had a strength contest. I had all the stuff that Roger LaPointe brought down, old barbells, old dumbbells. I had, boulder, I had uh, boulders and granite balls in the car. I hauled some of my own junk out, I think for Joe Ken's guys to use. Had a log that I brought with me for some strange reason. And we had a contest. The guys coming back, strength coaches coming back from a night of entertainment. Uh, one guy maxed out his credit card at a gentleman's club, and we actually had to buy him his meals and pay for him to get home. I'm not going to tell anyone that was Pac-Man. I'm not going to say anything. Um, the guys coming home from probably a bar and such said, what is going on here? I was going, we're having a lifting contest. Go, it's 1 a.m. I go, we're having a lifting contest. And once that competitive thing clicked, everyone went all out. And when it was all said and done, the best performance, the most weight lifted, the toughest and most consistent, incredibly frightening effort given was by Heather. At that moment, everyone in the profession said, who is she? Go, that's Mickey's girl. And I go, oh, that's a star. This is a star. Because she went on to Tennessee. Two important things happened there while working for Pat Summit. I think, you can correct me, I think Heather was the first female to be given assistant athletic director status in the United States. Now, the difference between being, you know, just a strength coach and being an assistant athletic director in charge of whatever you want to call it. We know it's lifting weights and just getting better. But you know, strength and performance or whatever. Is that you work for the school, you don't work for the coach. 
lot more protection, a lot more status. You're, you're, hey, you've been recognized by the university. She was the, everyone's got to be the first. Lauren Seagrave was the first speed guy. Boyd Epley is going to talk. He was the first strength coach, official strength coach. That's the first woman who took it to the next level. And she changed the culture of Tennessee. Ladies were going to lift weights. They are going to lift them the correct way. They are going to work as hard as the men. I walked into the room, and she had these cheerleaders in there, and she was killing them. The cheerleaders were getting killed. And it was like, hey, come to train. You train hard, otherwise don't come. And the women got it. The female basketball players got it. And everyone knows the success that Pat Summit had. There's your success. We know how it's built. The culture change. That changed the culture in the SEC and everyone who played against that UT team. Okay? She is the deal. Heather Mason. That's a wow. If I can say at this moment, I hope that you all have this opportunity to be uh, in a situation where everything comes back together at one point. And for me in my life, it's right now. <laughs> that's, that's amazing, amazing stories right there. Um, first and foremost, I'm going to tell you some stories, um, but there are also going to be some major thank yous. Number one, um, my mom is in the crowd, Lenore Mason, <laughs> and uh, mom has never seen me talk. She's uh, seen me warm up teams. She's seen us play. Um, she's never seen me train a team, and she's never seen me present. So all of a sudden, she walks in the door, wasn't ready for that. Your moms do the same thing? Yes, indeed. Mine will always be there. She's my ride or die. Um, the last four months have been amazing. I hope in your seventh decade you are able to run a 5K, zip line, and go soaring because that's what my mom does with me. And so if I have one ounce of the courage and the character my mom has, I'm going to be just fine. Second, I, I'm going to tell you, um, coming back to Cincinnati as an athlete, um, it's a different experience now, 25 years later. And just listening to Marathi, it was just a little bit out of body. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I remember walking in with my mom and my dad to this point in Kelly, your weight room right now. And as we walked in, we were seeing dudes get slaughtered. Absolutely slaughtered. Football players going nuts. Mickey's going nuts in the background. And to hear him say that he didn't know anything in his 20s, and he just trained dudes hard. I absolutely believe that, but he did know something because he got him really strong and he got him to believe. We walked in, my mom and my dad, I was in the center. He literally walked up to me, walked up to my father and said, my name is Mickey Marathi and I'm gonna train your daughter exactly like I'm training these football players. If that's not acceptable, she needs to walk out that door. And I'm gonna tell you right away, right now, my dad signed her up. I was 139 pounds, 5'11", volleyball player, and what I didn't have, I wasn't strong. I wasn't strong at all. And I knew I had to go to a school, to be any type of athlete, I had to go to a school that had a great strength and conditioning department. And Mickey said the magic words, it didn't matter the gender, it didn't matter who you were, we're going to train hard, we're going to train the same. I'm sold. My parents were sold. And, and that's, all, that's all that I needed to know. Walking in the door... You're talking about early 90s, 1991, so um, party of one. You had one strength coach. Sometimes you had some folks that would come in and work a couple months, and, um, and like I said, this is going full circle for me, so most people are either on the docket that have really made a big impression or here today. And Randy Burning, if you're here today, he worked with us a little bit uh, time to time, and he told me, he's like, Heather, I think that you need a little extra. We're going to beat you up throughout the week. Coach Marathi and myself, but you know what? I'm going to take you to the Hammer Strength Showroom down on Gilbert Avenue, and then we're going to get a little extra. So I said, well, absolutely, let's do this, right? All of a sudden, I walk in the door, and you, you know the stench? You know when there's an in inevitable stench? You'll never forget that for the rest of your life. I can smell this stench because Graders was right next door, and so it had this sweet stench. Well, note to self, when you're really weak and you really work hard and you really go after it, you throw up quite a bit. So no doubt smelling greater, seeing a gorilla in the corner, 
seeing all these muscle and fitness magazines and all of a sudden all the guys are looking like what's this girl doing in here and then I just kept coming Tommy Prophet if you're here Bill Jacobs Dr. Ted Lambertinus that's when I met them can you believe that I got to walk in the door and meet these guys I'm their family when I was 17 years old so all of a sudden I'm still not very good in this strength game but I want to be great so we had a, a competition Coach Barney had a competition with my volleyball players um, and it was on the, the hammer strength leg press I walked in the door at 135 pounds and probably could lift it like twice so um, ended up winning 360 pounds for 40 times now do anyone of you want to lift 40 repetitions on a leg press right now absolutely not but I'm going to tell you something I wanted that t-shirt so bad we'll do anything for a t-shirt won't we no question 1993 t-shirt right here this is my first hammer strength t-shirt you can you can tell it's absolutely worn to the T it means so much but what it does mean it means something about the people the people of hammer strength coach Marathi what he believed in and more than that that you can take something that was nothing and actually do something with it and uh, this, this I'm, I was hooked I was hooked I went to the hammer strength showroom every weekend my freshman and sophomore year and it changed me as an athlete so I walked in the door as an optometrist going to school as an optometrist going to Ohio State any, any bucks out there I told my volleyball coach just give me a scholarship for three years because I'm going to go to Ohio State I'm going to be an optometrist I fell in love with this strength game in a hurry and uh, that's all that, uh, that's all we wrote right there my very first strength clinic was a hammer strength clinic in 1996 I need to thank Boyd Epley I still have his notes 10 principles of power sports talking about ground-based activities multi-joint actions three-dimensional movements Lance Walker laughs at me because I, I, I absolutely keep everything that means everything in the world to me and this first strength clinic and the people that were involved absolutely changed myself as a strength and conditioning coach Alan Johnson Alan Johnson um, as you can tell Boyd and very difference in there's a lot of difference in coaching boy very detailed as far as he, what he wants you to know Alan Alan Johnson he gave me an outline and as you can tell I exploded it with all kinds of knowledge nuggets thank you Alan Johnson you matter and then I got coach Marathi anybody that's worked for coach Marathi absolutely knows this might not be systematic might not be pretty but it's sure gonna be effective these are my notes off the Regal Cincinnati Hotel right here and I will tell you job, res job responsibility motivation be professional be organized it's not what you do it's how you do it did he say that 20 years later today do you do the best you and don't change your character that's what I learned and I listen to it today and I still learn every day from him but I will tell you this these three individuals talking just like at, at our hammer strength clinic today inspire they do things very differently but they do everything for their athletes and it was absolutely amazing to me and I'll tell you you follow passion if you're sitting there today and if you remember anything from this talk please remember my stories to say find your fit if you are with people that rob you of energy and rob you of your passion every day and you do not get up and say hell yeah I'm going to work I'm telling you leave go find your people because I'll be honest other than nine months out of my 20 years of working I've been very very blessed to be with passion and I will follow it every day and twice on Sunday never follow a logo never follow a paycheck Before we get into changing the game, um, I was asked to talk a little bit about being a, a female strength coach. So I thought I'd give you a visual. I thought I'd give you a visual. What do you think of when you see this? What do you think of, Brian? Clown? Clown, absolutely. So there's 200 people in the Regal Cincinnati, and there's one female. That's me. I had guys say things to me like really this is what you're gonna do 
you're not going to last. How do you like me now? That's all I got to say back to them for the Norman, Oklahoma, Toby Keith lovers. How do you like me now? Absolutely. Clown. What else do you think of? What else do you think of? Red Nose. Rudolph. Rudolph. Leader. There were 12 women when I started. 12 women through the whole nation as strength and conditioning coaches. No head coaches, just assistants. 12 women. And I'm going to tell you, the one beautiful thing about that is we're all coaches. Coaches first. And I'll say that right away. But Mickey had a had a, just a, a really amazing forecasting about himself and said, Heather, I'm going to fly you up to see Sarah Wiley. Sarah Wiley was at University of Minnesota, still there. Talked to me for four days straight about strength and conditioning and some things I might face. And Mickey, Mickey really thought ahead to say, what is she going to get herself into that maybe I don't know? Now, all of a sudden, I've had it on for a couple minutes, and it's hard to breathe, right? Sometimes it's hard to breathe as a female strength coach. Yeah, absolutely. So you do things like lift at 1 o'clock in the morning, Dr. Ken, and absolutely prove to say, I'm here, and you're not going to get rid of me. Second thing you probably see with the nose, I see red right now. That's the only thing I can see on my periphery. I see red. You're angry. I'm going to tell you. I can't tell you how many times that people say different things. You just flip that off the back. But more than anything, you yourself know that there's a nose. But the people around you that you surround yourself with every single day do not. Coach Marotti absolutely didn't see me any differently. He saw me as a coach. So those of you that have female strength coaches that you do work with, that work with female athletes, you want to be seen as an athlete. Go after their jugular. Go after their heart. They're the same person. They may have a few different needs, but they're the same person. So I would say, I would say that to you right off the bat. But more so than that, um, to surround myself with these folks um, in, in my learning experience, um, it's been a, an amazing journey that led me um, for four years as an athlete with Coach Marotti and then seven years uh, with him at Cincinnati uh, in Notre Dame as an assistant and then was very, very fortunate enough to, to get an opportunity at Tennessee. I'll tell you a little bit about Coach Marotti. He said... I told him I was going to talk to, to, to you about him and show you a 20-year-old video of him. Um, and he said, well, make sure I'm on the road. Might be one of the most humble people I know. He doesn't like to be thanked. And uh, probably uh, if any of you work for him, he'll never say thank you every day for what you do. He probably won't pat you on the back, and he probably won't tell you you did a great job. I'm just going to tell you that. But I'm, I will tell you, anytime that is a hard time in your life. He will be there and stand right next to you. My dad passed away when I was 25. He called me up and he said, Heather, if you come back in a day, 10 days, one month, one year, you're paid, you will be my assistant. That's family, right? That's family. No question. Very, very blessed with that. Very, very blessed with Coach Marotti as my mentor. Today we're going to talk about change the game. Right now you might say, well, hey, you said remember, find your fit. I think that's the most important. You, you, you stay with the people that uh, absolutely emphasize and tolerate what you do, what value what you, value what you do. You, you heard Coach Marani, you get what you emphasize, you get what you tolerate. Can I tell you that's in my dreams? You get what you emphasize, you get what you tolerate, and it's real simple. Don't be around people that rob you of energy. Change the game. You just might need to change your people, change your game. But it's, we're going to talk about establishing value in your department. It's not just about the X's and O's. We're going to talk about creating your plan of attack. Um, first thing is first, let's talk about the Power Conference. Um, you, you need to know uh, culture in itself. Um, you have with our Power Five Conference, you, you do see strength coaches that are tied with football coaches that absolutely, when football coaches leave, then that strength coach leaves. And, and ultimately, unfortunately, these athletes are getting hurt uh, because they're having two, three, four strength coaches during their time in college. Um, but that being said, the majority of folks are high school strength coaches. More majority of folks hey, probably have an opportunity to be at that university for a while. So um, this is a little bit, speaking a little bit more to you on that and about job security as well as creating retention within your staff. So the second thing they asked me to talk about not only being a female strength coach but also a little bit more of the administrative side. We love X's and O's, right? That's what we got in the business. We love training our athletes. If any of you 
at the end of today or tomorrow want to talk about training athletes, I would love to talk to you about it. This is going to be just a little bit more on the X's and O's side of it. Offense and defense speak a lot about this. Have you ever worked with a sport coach that, hey, they loved running a certain defense and live or die, this is what we're going to do? Anybody? I will tell you, Coach Summit changed her defense based on pers personnel. Not only what the, what the opponent was doing, but her personnel. And I think that was one of her best, best traits ever, was changing her offense or changing her defense based on the offense. And I, I'm going to stress that to you. If you're in a situation, um, we're dealing with administration, and, and they're saying, well, hey, you guys don't make money. You don't sell tickets. We give you money. I'm going to stress to you, well, change your defense to your offense. If you want to retain your employees, you want to increase um, folks' salary, if you want to increase your budget, if you want to get better equipment, all of these things, you got to talk to administrators like they see it. Not like you see it. Small story. In South Bend, Indiana, Aaron Hillman uh, was a strength coach with me there. And um, it was a race to turn on the lights. Keith, do you take a lot of pride in being in that weight room 12, 14, 16 hours a day? Sure you do. There is no question. You see that smile like no question. Absolutely you do. That's what we do. That's what we do. Do administrators care about that? No. <laughs> they do not. They don't. How are we measured? Now there's a $24 million question. How are we measured? Another one. What do they see? What do administrators see? What do they see? What do they think about? What do they care about at the end of the day? They're accountable for the bottom line, right? So that being said, I had an assistant that was with me for several years and I really needed to keep him. Um, Colin had been with us and he trained many more athletes than I did and I was with basketball and Coach Summit really thought that all I did was train basketball and that's all that mattered. I was her only customer, so to speak. But uh, that being said, I, needed, I really needed to keep him. So I went to the administration during a budget meeting. I changed my defense to their offense and I created a, a strategic radar. So in the strategic radar, you're going to see facilities, community, budget, cohesion, development, and customers. I started talking the verbiage like my administrator, like her. Creating value, not just stronger athletes, putting a better performance on the, on the field, the court, in the pool. I wanted her to see what else we were doing. What else, I'd like you to think about yourself right now. What else do you do for your department? Is it just train your athletes or do you extend? Quick example, um, professional development uh, for our staff. Many of you are in situation, you can get free human resource classes at your university or your community college or, or very at a very low price. So making sure your staff has professional development opportunities, just like coming to a hammer strength clinic or, or other clinics, really understanding and, and retaining your staff that way. Cohesion, letting them know that. Administration, okay, let's talk about this. Number one source of fatigue. What creates fatigue? What, cre what creates fatigue? Lack of, yeah, lack of water is one of them. No question. Now think about your administrative assistants. What do they do all day? What do they do all day? Coach Jurassic, what, what do our administrative assistants, secretaries do all day? They sit, indeed, and they don't get a lot of water. So what we did? We ended up putting water bottles, put our logo on it, and created a challenge because we all love challenges, right? We wanted to create a 20-day change, change your habit type situation, but also, hey, bring them involved in what we're doing. And do you think administrative assistants start talking? Yes. And who starts listening? Administrators, right? So all of a sudden, they start talking about strength and conditioning. I'm not there. My staff's not there. Athletes aren't around. But hey. An assistant athletic director seeing these water balls around, wondering what's going on. Cohesion, real important. Creating buy-in. I want to show you this, this clip here. Pat, i got to think over the last 30 years of your coaching career, that's probably one of the biggest changes in basketball, strength and condition. You never lifted weights when you were playing, did you? No, absolutely not. And when, when I came to Tennessee, that was never even a thought that entered my mind is that we have to get in the weight room and get stronger. 
Uh, it was just teaching on the court. But obviously, we're far more sophisticated in what we're doing in all aspects, whether it's the nutrition or the weight training, the, the actual conditioning, and the cardio is so important. But Heather Mason has just done, and she's done an incredible job with this program. And she has a way of challenging and, and motivating without breaking anyone's spirit. And, and I think this team and, and our team since she's been here have really excelled in, in the weight room and we've been able to carry that physicality onto the court and make us a better basketball team. Bigger, stronger, faster. We'll show you highlights from Tennessee's Tennessee Silver against Alabama. With Coach Summit, she won before me, she didn't need me. She even said so much on the phone. She said, girl, I don't need you to win games. I need your fire. I have that on my voice message. I need your fire. Passion. Like personalities. That's what drew me to Tennessee. Coach Morani asked, the, the very first day I started working at University of Notre Dame, he asked us to, to develop a five-year plan. I had two tracks, to be a, a, a sport administrator and then also to be a head strength coach at the University of Tennessee. He said, University of Tennessee, you got one school. There are 381. What, what's going on? You, you got one opportunity here. This doesn't make any sense. That's where I want to go, coach. I got on a plan of speaking a lot, wanted to get my name out, and, and really, uh, really learn quite a bit. And all of a sudden, after 12 years, her strength coach, she wanted to change. She saw my name kept popping up. She calls Coach Moratti. Coach Moratti comes into to my office, and, and he said, Heather, go get your job. Called him up. and said, we'd like you to send you a, a, an off-season off strength and conditioning plan, basketball plan. And I'm going to tell you, if that's my job, I'm driving it overnight, and I'm going to be there in the morning, and I'm going to deliver it right in the hand. And I'll never forget her face when I came in, and I said, Hi, ma'am. I'm Heather Mason. And she just looked at me like, did we have a meeting? Like she missed a, an appointment, a meeting? I'm like, no, ma'am. I just want to deliver my strength and conditioning manual. Nice seeing you. And, and at that point, she just looked at me. I like you. I like you a lot. And I, I said to at that point, you know, you have a feeling about people find your fit, like I said. I knew. I'm like, this is my job. Go back to, to South Bend. She gives me a call. She's like, you're coming down for an interview. I want you to present to all the coaches. She's late, 15 minutes. Tries to throw you off a little bit. I know she did it categorically. She never told me so, but I know she did. Just want to see what you had. My very last slide said, this could be Tennessee strength. Looked her straight up in the eye. She looked at me again, you're my strength coach. Likes, grab on to likes. And that intensity and what I learned from her, I can't put into words openly. Cohesion, that's a big piece. Facilities, mindful philosophy, time efficiency and forecasting. What I didn't know, my teammate, and I'm so blessed to have the teammates I have with Blair Prince and Lawn Record, Blair, he was talking to folks at uh, Las Vegas, and he said to a lot of the young strength coaches, you need in your desk to have a plan. Design your own weight room. And I thought in the back of my mind, well, if they're the ones that aren't raising the money and they're not the head strength coach, is it going to look a little funny that they're designing the weight room? Well, he's so much smarter than me. What it did is this. It got you thinking about your philosophy. It got to thinking about how you move your athletes through, what equipment you use, percentage of time in what space, different coaching sight lines, what are the experiences and education of your coaches, where should they be with those athletes, how many, how many athletes, and I will tell you, what you do at your school, at your high school, with the number of folks, the Millers, they do it well. The time efficiency and your philosophy within that, that is just amazing, and I will tell you that. Being mindful, especially in the high school realm, if you're high school strength coaches, it's extremely important. So I really would challenge you, whether you're in this field for one year or ten years, to, hey, what's my ideal facility? Because I will tell you, once facilities start going, those architects already have plans before you even know about it. So if you have a plan, you're ready for them. Community. Something else on a strategic radar. Community. What do you give back? Our staff once a week, went to the Wellness uh, Cancer Community Center, and 
worked with, with survivors and their families. We gained so much more than we gave. But once again, administrators saw this, and so we're doing more. I want to use Eastern Michigan. I, I get an opportunity to see schools every week and see great things that they do. Eastern Michigan had their first annual um, women's experience, strength and conditioning experience, and then all the funds raised went into a charity. And I just thought that was really a, a really neat concept. And of course, you've got your newsletters and community. But how do you keep everyone engaged in just the strength and conditioning? Because do this so, and now we're going to get to the money part. Folks want to know the behind the scenes, not just the game. So here you go. Development. I told you that I started the strategic radar in hopes to get uh, my assistant moved up to an associate head coach and um, a nice raise. And that being said, my AD said, Heather, well, your staff in your department you don't raise money, so it's very hard to keep increasing your budget. And I said, ma'am, yes, we do. And so I gave her um, our budget, um, and with that, you had an in-kind gift with Neil's Produce. If you have, I will tell you this, you can get free fruit if you just get up at 4 o'clock, 4.30 in the morning. If there's a produce company anywhere near you, there's fruit that will go bad. And if you get up, they will give you at least bushels of apples and bananas because it goes bad. So I was, every Monday... 4.30, we're there, picking up bananas, picking up apples. There's free things to have. In-kind gift ended up being $52,000 that I showed her that did not come out of our budget, number one. Just had to get up. Number two, Coach Summit asked me the very first year, she said, what are your needs? And I said, we've got some knees in our backs. And um, I'd like to not run them as much on the court, so cross trainers would be great, but quite a bit of money. She's like, you know what, how about you just come to uh, an event with me? I'm like, all right. Of course, someone asks you anything, you're probably going to say yes really quickly. And so I was just sitting down, real easy, just like this, just like next to my old assistant, Tyler. And Coach Summit tells stories like no one that I know. And I'm watching her and listening to her. And all of a sudden, she started talking about strength and conditioning. And she started talking about me. And she said, Heather, come on up here. I want you to tell a story. So all of a sudden, there are 500, 600 people here. She's like, tell, tell about Taisha Fluker. Probably about 240 pounds, 6'5". Could lift a side rise, a, a dumbbell, about 5 pounds. That told you anything when I walked in the door. All of a sudden, Coach Summit walks in the door, and she's seeing plates stacked up on the wall sit with Taisha. And she's just sweating a lot, like I am right now. Just soaked. And, but she's hanging in there and fighting. Coach Summit sees her. Coach Summit said this, I was scared. I've never heard Coach Summit. She was scared one day in her life. She said, I was scared. And then all of a sudden, I'm starting to tell this story. Coach Summit says, Heather, she puts her hand up like this, you'll give $1,000, won't you? I don't make Coach Summit money. You have to give back to your own development. No question. They want to see. Do you give back? So here I go. Here's $1,000. Then Coach Summit says, I got $1,000. All of a sudden, we've got $35,000 in less than three minutes. And Minister saw that. Hey, what you can do, be a little bit creative. Maybe not all of you have some Coach Summits in the room, but uh, there's a lot of different creative ways that you can do it. Uh, Coach Deese actually is now at Tulsa, but he was at Mississippi State uh, less than a year, raised private funds. Probably one of the strength coaches um, that I know is probably the best in development. He would, he would love to, to talk with you about it. I saw this one night. Go fund me. Anyone done this? Go fund me account for your weight room? Thousands of dollars being given with go fund me accounts. Couldn't believe it. To high schools. Just talking to them about the needs. And all of a sudden, they're getting money. I thought that was amazing. I hadn't seen that. This company called Pledge It. Um, Opportunities where all can get involved. So many times footballs and basketballs are kind of tagged to raise the money. And hey, this way you can get swimmings, tennises, and everybody else involved and really look at individual results, okay? And moms, dads, grandmas, grandpas, everybody can get involved. It's on a PayPal account, no money being transmitted, and then they can see individual improvement. People are raising thousands, and you actually get better return than your concessions. So if you're high school, another way you can show that, hey, we're raising money. 
budget satellite camps. In one summer, $53,000, four weekends, enough to change our culture in our weight room right away. Going to high schools, and in, if you're in the NCAA, you know that you have to invite three or more schools, so it's not a, a violation. But inviting and coaching, and, and you learn so much with your, your staff, not only teaching, but I think Coach Summit had it right. She said, Heather, I remember her telling me, the smartest coaches are the high school coaches. They wear the most hats. They have the most amazing cre creativity. She sit to the absolute end, the last minute of every single camp. Always be there with high school coaches. And just, she, a lot of times she'd walk up and say, tell me something I don't know. Now imagine if you were a high school coach, or you may, may be a high school coach, she comes up to you, the woman's won a lot. Tell me something I don't know, and she really meant it. She learned so much from those camps, from those high school coaches that was really important to her. Going to camps, I've learned this. If you're a high school strength coach, the difference in bodies are amazing. Absolute amazing. In college, I get them at 18. I, they may be genetic trash bags, or they may be, may be genetic phenoms. I don't know. I don't recruit them. But at that point, I've got to train them, right? I will tell you, in high school, it's, there's even a bigger continuum that you have to deal with. So it really taught my staff and taught me as well with our satellite camps. Muscle Milk Grant, an amazing grant that with need have given thousands and thousands of dollars to high schools. A lot of folks don't know about that one. Look that one up. But last but not least, and this is my favorite part, boom, the customer. Please don't think this, that, hey, you say customer, that mean athlete, that mean coach? Yeah, it means both. We sell every day. Every single day. I'm in Fulton. You sell every day. You are the best salesman I know. You sell physical pain, sir. To genetic phenoms and genetic trash bags. You don't know. They may get great results in eight weeks. They may get great results in a year. Right, sir? Absolutely. You can sell absolutely anything. That being said, and you love doing it. You're the same passion at 4.30 in the morning and at 4.30 at night. Really amazing. I may not know you but I know you. A very different crowd and a very different heart about strength coaches and there's a whole lot of respect there. So in this, going back to the administrative meeting, I came up with that strategic radar. Do you think my assistant got a raise? What do you think? Yes, he did. Do you think he got a title improvement? Yes, he did. Well, now this was interesting. So my AD asked me, she's like, Heather, you know, most coaches come in and they ask for yourself. Why didn't you ask for a raise? I need him more than I need myself. So she's like, you know what? Let's just play hypothetical. I'm going to ask you, what would you say to me for a raise? I'm going to say to you, ma'am, that I'm, I sell better than anybody. People sell tickets here, and that's a lot of fun. They sell promotions. They sell absolute fun. They sell cute. It's, it's, it's absolutely great to be a part of, of a university and a program. I sell pain. Right away, she got me on a speaking circuit, and I was selling everything. I'm like, openly? She, she absolutely used that. So don't think to yourself that just because, hey, I'm not in, I'm not in compliance, I'm not in tickets, I'm not in, in, within the administration, that administrators can't use you. You have the best stories ever, ever. Because someone would just take me on the road to kind of deflect off of her just so I could tell stories. You have something to give that not a lot of people do. So remember, you sell too. Once again, going back to that, put your defense up to the offense. Three things came important, and I'll tell you just a little bit about a situation, especially if you're dealing with female athletes. Um, one thing has gotten better over 20 years is training age, um, but it's still not great. If you come from the Millers, you're going to have a great, great opportunity to walk into college and really understand strength and conditioning. But a lot of programs, a lot of female athletes, they have a hard time. I was at a female-only athletic department, the Lady Bowl side, so all they saw training were females. So when I walked in the door, that was different for me. I never thought about it. At Notre Dame, I walked in three months after Coach Roddy. So we had football going. 
I didn't realize how the volleyball team, the basketball team, the women's tennis team, how they saw, just by visualizing and seeing the intensity and seeing the discipline, how all of a sudden it was much easier to change a culture. So I will tell you, wonderful, on when you have some of those boys that have been playing since they were in junior high, hey, it's not a bad thing to jump people in. No question. Once again, no gender line. So that being said, enhanced performance, reduced risk of injury, and I'd say the biggest thing with training a female athlete is the third one, increased self-confidence. Pretty important. Pretty important. Um, a lot of girls, especially uh, up to 18, worry about, hey, what am I going to look like? What am I going to look like? Hey, do you? You are going to develop like you. Okay, so that being said, a lot of times I would throw in just like, it was wonderful, Dr. Ken, I'm going to tell you, that night, that was revolutionary for me. I also bought stone padlocks from him, and uh, I, I still have them to this day. So bringing chains, bringing stones, bringing things that aren't cute and that aren't pretty into a workout, especially with female athletes, that matters. I, I, I absolutely, I would make sandbags, set up behind them, I'd make sandbags with inner tooth tires, Film with sand, hose clamp them, duct tape them, flip them around their head, and here we go. So I really appreciate you for that. I want to show you this video real quick. Um, not about the school, not about the program. Absolutely all about the people and about how they train. stories, but this one might be one of the most important. She came back and she started training. Uh, so there's four weeks left in the, in the postseason she started training and wanted to train and train them extremely hard. Probably the tightest knit group that I've ever been around. Not our couple national championship teams. It's this one. They've been through adversity. So when you think that something's bad, I'll tell you something, you can turn that one around and a lot of it comes through training and what culture and what environment you bring. And like I said, five of them, so that's uh, eight years removed and, and are coming and they're going to demo. A lot of them are still playing overseas and coaching. And so, uh, but, but know that through adversity, a lot of times you can do some real special things training. And I'm going to leave you probably with one of uh, the most important people that I've ever been around, Coach Summit. Um, I'm very, very blessed to be with her for the last three years of her life. I drew two I do believe, um, I did get that job at the University of Tennessee, like I said, um, coached with her for 10 years. But I'm going to tell you, the last three probably were the most impactful. I learned more about coaching, I learned more about myself than any other time in my coaching career. Um, this lady was affected, afflicted with dementia, Alzheimer's type, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, a total knee, and um, every given minute, you didn't know what you were going to get. She fought like no one I've ever seen made me a better coach. The last week of her life, she said, Heather, get it right. There's something in you when you're with a coach for a long time. They don't have to say things. 
and to be with her for 10 years coaching basketball and strength and conditioning with her girls, you really learn mannerisms. They didn't have to talk. They didn't have to talk. So during this time of her affliction, she didn't have to talk. There was something that connected you soul to soul. So once again, athletics, it's a vehicle. Coaching is a very special, special profession, and you're very blessed to be in it. But there's a lot of things more important than, and I was very, very blessed to be with her. And I will, I will leave you this piece. Her very last words to me were, love you. Love you. And she gave me a kiss on her cheek, on my cheek. And so I do know that you will leave with love in your life. Last thought with Coach Summit. My favorite question for people that have achieved great success is if you could just share one life lesson with every young person in the world, what would that one life lesson be? Oh, that's a that's that's a tough one. Um, to always to, to look in the mirror and, and see yourself and challenge yourself to be the very best and to always do the right thing. And again, never compromise your principles, never lower your standards. Whatever it is that you desire to do in life, have the courage and the commitment to do it and to do it to your absolute best. And always, always know that you have to believe it to do it. First thing we talked about were stories and uh, finding your fit. And very blessed to have found my fit with Coach Summit for 10 years and then three after. Um, I, like I said, if there's one thing that you remember out of this whole talk, it's to be around people with passion and follow it. I'll go ahead and put the 20-year-old video that I told you with Coach Marati. I'll put it on. Sometimes it's hard to see with the, with the sun, but if you want to stick around, I know that we're, we're going to have a break here, but if you want to stick around and watch some of it, um, I think Ivan Fulton, 20 years ago, I think you're on this one, buddy. Orlando Smith, if you're in here, you are on it. So uh, that being said, um, I really appreciate your time, and that's the most important thing you could have given me, so thank you very much.